Good morning, hi, welcome to House of Light. This is our first live stream, um, so forgive me if I make any bloopers and uh, if I'll be watching out for any comments um, for people joining, but if I'm kind of not keeping on top of that, um, it's because I'm a newbie. So um, yeah, welcome and um, I'm excited today to be sharing um, a fairly basic recipe with you. Um, I'm gonna wait until I see a few more people joining before I actually start cooking. Um, so at the moment, I'll just talk about really our experience so far at House of Light um, of what is happening in the world right now. Um, so the initial lockdown here was actually fairly blissful for us. Um, we're so lucky to live in a place um, where we have space and clean air. Um, we're obviously out in the countryside, we're not in a city, so what the first lockdown provided for me and my family was um, time and space and an opportunity to slow down. Um, so I was spending a lot of time with the children, a lot more time with the children. Um, I've got two small girls, I've got a, a two and a half year old and an almost five year old. Um, and it was a beautiful opportunity to connect more deeply with them and have a bit more time and space. Um, and I spent lots of time in the garden. I'm an avid gardener, um, although it doesn't always work for me. <laughs> it's not the most successful garden, but um, I love trying. I love having my hands in the dirt. So, um, yeah, I spent a lot more time in the garden. And this also connected with one of our, our passions and one of our visions for House of Light is a deep level of sustainability. So this really connected with, um, with our vision for that. So I've been reclaiming some areas that were flower beds or that were not used and I've been planting them up, um, moving towards uh, permaculture and a much more seasonal garden, making sure that there's constantly things being planted or, or growing um, that I can use in the kitchen. So, um, yeah, acknowledging that there was and is a lot of suffering going on out there in the world. Um, for me personally, I felt extremely grateful um, that I could really find the gems um, amongst, amongst the challenges. Um, and, and that's ongoing, you know, it's been a bit of a roller coaster on an emotional level. It's, um, it, it is being challenging. Um, but yeah, I've really been, been finding some, some, some little gems and some ways to turn this into a positive time um, for us. So yeah, really, really just focusing on the positivity, on um, missing connection with people, not realising how much I needed other people and connection. So really putting time and effort back into reconnecting. This is one of the reasons that I'm doing this. So this is a, a new way for a lot of us to reconnect with people is now through screens and videos, which I would have hated before. But, um, you know, if it's the only way, um, then, then that's what I want to move towards. You know, obviously what I truly miss is hugging people and being on a dance floor and sharing physical space with people. But failing that, if we can't do that, this is our next best thing. So from House of Light, we'll be sharing um, food and cookery, uh, yoga classes. Those are two of, of my passions. Uh, possibly even get out in the garden, share some things that are going on in the garden. Um, my husband, Adrian, might also be sharing some of his passions, um, some, some meditations or some, um, some of his learning love work. He teaches... Um, a model called the Learning from the Learning Love Institute. Um, so again, because he can't share his retreats and many of his face-to-face -face interactions at the moment, um, he'll also be hopefully bringing that online. I can force him to. So um, I'm just going to check in with Sally, who's got her eye on the on the mm -hmm. screen to see if anybody's joining. Yeah. Uh, if I should start cooking yet, yeah. or otherwise I can introduce what I'm going to cook. Yes, I think let's go into some cooking. We've got a few people watching and some comments. Okay, oh great, that's lovely. Nice to see people have joined. Uh, yeah, it's quite flattering, but it's also making me more nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'll just get on. I'll do what I do best. I'll talk about food. <laughs> so um, today I'm going to be making um, a golden paste. 
and then I'll be converting that into a delicious um, golden milk chai latte. So um, the golden milk is, it comes from the Indian culture. It would originally be uh, fresh cow's milk um, boiled up with um, turmeric is one of the essential ingredients. Um, so the basic golden paste recipe is just the turmeric, black pepper to activate the turmeric, um, and coconut oil. But I'm going to be adding some other flavours, uh, not only because I love all the chai flavours like the cinnamon and the ginger um, and the cardamom, but also because these have added properties and benefits to, to add to the mix. Um, so the golden paste itself, just the, the turmeric, the active ingredient in the turmeric is curcumin. Um, and curcumin is um, notoriously good for um, uh, inflammation and joint pain. So it has anti-inflammatory properties. Um, it also has really strong antioxidant properties. So helping to cleanse the body. Um, it's, there are other things that aren't so proven, but they're suggested, which a lot of, with a lot of the natural remedies, um, yeah, people are not able to um, advertise them as, as fact because of legal loopholes. But I personally have a, a deep faith in, in, in these, um, these unscientifically proven, but they've been used over millennia. So um, it's also suggested that curcumin can improve your mood. So in these challenging times, again, a brilliant go-to drink, um, it, it fights against depression and is a, a mood lifter. Um, also, as well as being antioxidant, it's got strong antibacterial and antiviral and antifungal properties. So again, with the virus going around, with the coronavirus, we really need to boost our immune systems. Um, the other ingredients, basically just support the curcumin in this. So the, the ginger and the cinnamon and the, um, and the cardamom are also known to support these antifungal, antiviral, antibacterial and antioxidant properties. So um, I discovered this drink basically because um, I have a, a thyroid issue and at one point when I was having fairly strong symptoms, I was looking at my diet more carefully and Unfortunately, I was doing that, woo, but I realised that coffee was a real trigger. Um, it was bringing on the symptoms really strongly for me. So I, I tried to get rid of coffee out of my life, which was quite difficult. Uh, but I realised that the, one of the main parts that I enjoyed about coffee was the social aspect. It was being able to go out and meet somebody and chat over a hot drink that was comforting and, and warming. So I had to find something to replace that. Um, I found the golden paste and then once I started researching it and looking into it, I realised it had all of these added benefits. So um, yeah, I was super happy to, to find this, this alternative and it's now my coffee. Um, there's also, if you do choose to add the cardamom in, there's a very gentle um, stimulant within the cardamom. So you, without that really jangling, harsh, um, kind of high that you get from the caffeine, there's a, a very gentle stimulant through the, through the cardamom. Okay, so I'm gonna start cooking. Um, I'm gonna go over to the, to the cooker here for a moment, but I think you can still hear me and still see. So what we're gonna add first is half a cup of um, turmeric powder. Obviously, if you have the option to use organic, um, it's, it's a better option. Um, you can also now buy raw turmeric powder and I read in one of the recipes that if you go for the raw turmeric powder in this first phase where you're um, gently cooking it down with the water you need to take um, a good few minutes longer. Um, but I'm not using the raw version, I'm just using organic. So I'm putting in half a cup of organic turmeric powder into a dry pan. And then the recipe says that you add two to three cups of water. Now my experience with this is that when I first did it, I followed the recipe to a T, but since then I've learned to um, just gauge it by looking. So you want to start off with a fairly uh, a runny liquid, and as you gently heat it, you just want it to reduce down to a fairly thick paste. 
So it's not um, an exact science with the water. I just add one to two cups and then keep my eye on it and gauge it as we go. I'm just adding a couple to start with and I'm going to put a flame under there. So just gently mixing this, making sure all the, the lumps are dissolved. Oh, it's also one of the other health benefits, supposedly, that's only a suggestion, they're not sure, is that it boosts, boosts your brain function. So I'm super pleased to hear about that. As a mum of two small people, I've got about three brain cells left, so I'm just kind of like looking after them as best I can. So um, hopefully it's gonna aid with that. And also ginger. Ginger is supposed to support um, your memory and reaction times. So um, yeah, again, it comes in handy when like a small beaker comes flying at my head and I can just like use the reaction <laughs> times to grab it out of the air ninja style. <laughs> Okay, so it's going to take a little bit of time for that to start to thicken. Um, so I'm just going to jump a couple of steps ahead or give you some other options. So eventually I will be adding um, the golden paste, putting it into a mug and adding half hot water and half hot milk. So there's loads of other options that you can do with it. If you want a really nice rich drink, you can do it with all, all hot milk. Uh, which I do sometimes. I also find that um, if you're using plant-based milk, especially the, um, the rice milk or the oat milk, it's really quite sweet. For me, it's sweet enough to just have the, the, the milk and the natural sugars. You can add any sweetener that you like. Obviously, um, non-refined sugar is, is always best, any, any sugar alternative, so um, a re really nice uh, raw organic honey, um, or perhaps maple syrup, but just bearing in mind if you're using it mainly for the properties for joint inflammation, it really is a better idea not to add any sweetener as any type of sugar, raw or natural or not, is, um, is an inflammatory, I'm afraid. Um, so you can also, if you don't want to add any milk, you can also just have it with the boiling water and have it, it's just like almost like a herbal tea then. Um, if you don't want to add all the extra spices that I'm adding, if you don't want to turn it into a, a chai flavoured thing, if you keep it more um, a slightly plainer flavour with just the turmeric and the pepper, then you also have a paste that you can add to porridge or smoothies um, or um, mixed through rice or grains, um, just using it almost as a, it doesn't have curry flavourings, but almost like a, a flavoured like flavored paste um, to put through other cooking. So I'm just keeping my eye on this, just keeping it moving so it doesn't catch on the bottom. Um, when it comes to the pepper, um, basically the more the better. It depends on your personal taste. You can make it without any pepper, but from what I've read, um, your body can absorb the, the curcumin and the active ingredients so much better with the pepper there to, to activate it. Um, it also helps um, yeah, your, your actual body, your system to absorb it more efficiently. So the recipe that I use says two to three teaspoons, I think it is. So I always go to the upper end of that. Luckily, I love black pepper. Anyway, I love that kind of spice to it. Um, so I put in as much as I can, but, but do it to your own taste. Um, obviously you want something that's enjoyable to consume, you don't want something that's like some horrible medicine that you have to take, so make it, um, make it enjoyable for you to eat. Okay, Juliet's asking if we'll be sharing the recipe later on, we can post it up on the page. Yeah, absolutely, um, I'll do a, yeah, a written version of the recipe. Um, 
it's really, yeah, it's fairly simple, but um, we'll, we'll put it up so you can refer back to it. Okay, so let me just have a quick look, see who's joined us on here. So I'm totally new to this. So Sally's just handing me, <laughs> handing me a laptop from the side. Okay, who's who's come online? We've got Juliet Barrett. Juliet Barrett is with us. Uh, Lizzie yeah. Wolfenden. Hi, Lizzie. Lizzie Wolfenden. Uh, Margaret Sarfus. Margaret. Margaret Sarfus. Margaret Sarfus. Uh, Robin mm -hmm. Wynne Evans. Okay, we've got Robin Wynne Evans. Um, and there's some other people watching. Oh, Juliet's mum suffers from arthritis. So. Okay, yeah, this would be uh, Juliet, if your mum suffers from arthritis, this is a fantastic um, remedy to use. Um, it literally, you can use it on a, on a daily basis, it's not something you can kind of overdose on. Um, the other alternative remedies that I know are good for inflammation is, is rosehip. Um, so you can also, they're, they're not, um, what's the word, they don't counteract each other, you can use them in conjunction with each other, so just so you don't get bored, you could have like a, you know, a rose hip tea in the morning, and then your evening drink could be your, your golden milk, and that is fantastic for supporting, um, yeah, any, any joint or inflammatory disorders, basically, my, Dad suffers from gout, and he. I've been recommending that that he gives it a go. So he he's trying that. He's also on the rose hip tea. So this is now starting to thicken. You can see that it's becoming a little bit more gloopy. So I'm just going to keep my eye on it. As I say, you don't want it um, going all powdery on the bottom and starting to stick. So just gently keeping it moving. people on the retreats? Yeah, yeah, Sally's just mentioning, do we, do we offer this on the retreats? Um, yeah, we, um, within the menu that we offer on retreat, we often have um, a really yummy little treat in between um, lunch and dinner, and it's just something that's um, generally has got health benefits or is high vibrational food or is a, an energy boost like a little energy ball something small but packed with power so this would be the kind of thing that we might offer um, to our guests mid-afternoon or the other thing that we do sometimes uh, if people are coming for winter retreats we've got um, an outside area with a beautiful huge metal fire bowl and um, we either just gather out there um, just to, to connect and socialise, or sometimes the leaders have um, have letting go ceremonies that they like to um, to to do by the fire to um, just release or, or let go of anything that's not serving us. And often when we're out there with a the fire bowl, then I'll do um, either a, a, a golden milk or an organic um, hot chocolate. Um, I've got a lovely recipe for um, yeah raw vegan hot chocolate made with brown rice actually it sounds quite weird but you get this deliciously thick green creamy gloopy hot chocolate um, so yeah they're lovely on the on the colder evenings so this is really starting to small bubbles are now appearing at the bottom so I'm really mindful to keep it moving again not to allow it to catch but it's really starting to thicken as I say, the amount of water that I add does vary from time to time. Not quite sure why it does different things. Maybe it's the, uh, I don't know, the weather or the humidity in the air, whatever it is. Um, but it's looking like today. I probably won't add any more water. I'm just going to keep it moving. So that was that was two cups of water to half a cup of powder. And I'm now actually, while it's just warming, I'm going to start to add some of the spices in so that the heat can allow um, the flavours to really infuse. So, yeah, as I say, oh, crap, black pepper, that smells <laughs> yummy. Um, <laughs> it's, um, I've done at least three teaspoons for my taste. I'm going to put all of that in. I've got some cardamom pods in here. 
I've got probably about 10 or 12 cardamom pods, but again, it just depends on your own taste. If you like a nice subtle background hint of spices, then obviously you just go less. If you like it quite punchy, um, I spent so much time in India, I'm a bit of a chai addict, so I like to go large on the spices and just really have some big flavours in there. So I'm just gently breaking those open in the pestle and mortar. And then I'm going to add them. So that's the cardamom and the black pepper has gone in there. I'm going to put about half a teaspoon each of ground cinnamon and um, ground ginger also. So I'm going to turn the flame down, keep it really low now as it's starting to bubble and thicken. So in goes the ginger and in goes the cinnamon. Oh, it's amazing smells now. <laughs> smelling good. It's like, yeah, like I'm walking down the street in uh, Dharamsala. <laughs> okay, so mixing those in. I also, it's a little bit left field, it's not classic chai flavour, but um, rose petals. I just think it adds a, a beautiful kind of floral, a little bit more of a high note to it. Um, makes it a little bit more exotic, so I'm going to put some, also some rose petals in there. Yeah, we've got a question from Juliet. Yeah? What is the best drink to have first thing in the morning to replace caffeine? To replace caffeine? Okay, well, it's not a caffeine replacement, but the first thing that I drink every morning is warm lemon water. So, um, the purpose of that is to alkaline the body. Uh, well, it, it obviously hydrates you, but it also alkalizes the body. So that's the first thing that I put into my body every morning. Um, then if you want a, um, a coffee replacement, you can get some beautiful um, organic green teas. So I'm not suggesting that they're caffeine free. They're definitely not. They do have caffeine in, um, but I think in smaller quantities than, than coffee. Um, Another fantastic one that I love, which I had to experiment with a little bit to get the flavour right, is mate tea. Um, so it's um, a, a leaf that comes from South America and it does give you that, again, rather than the jangly caffeine high that you get with coffee, um, it's a, a gentle stimulant. Um, but yeah, with, without all the downsides, without the, the crash that you get after the caffeine. So mate tea, the way that I do it is um, to brew it for not too long. I find that if you brew it for a long time, it goes bitter. But some people like that bitter edge. And again, you can also add a little bit of raw honey um, or some kind of sweetener. So yeah, I would say warm lemon water first to cleanse and just to, as a good start, and to alkaline. And then if you want a little energy boost, either mate tea, green tea, um, or if it's a really cold, miserable morning, then um, a really yummy raw hot chocolate, which you can just do with um, raw cacao paste, mix it into a paste with a little bit of water, and then again, as with um, the drink that I'm making today, either top it up with boiling water or with hot milk. So yeah, quite a few different options there to start your day. Okay, so this is, I'm going to bring it over a bit so you can see the consistency. It's starting to get quite gloopy rather than being really liquidy. I'm just going to keep heating it for a little bit more. Put the heat back up a bit, speed it up a little bit. Finding, I mean, I'm completely obsessed with food anyway, at the best of times, but um, yeah, since uh, coronavirus and various different lockdowns, I've been having more time to experiment with food and recipes and really reconnecting with, with how it affects my mood. Um, so there's obviously a 
fine line between um, using comfort food in, in a negative way, um, or whenever you feel down, you know, just comfort eating. But I think as long as you're being really mindful about what you put into your body and you're using food to lift your mood in a positive way, in a conscious way, then it's such an amazing tool to have. Um, so, again, another, the other one of my passions being yoga. It's been an incredible time to really bring the energy in and down and focus on the fact that there can be absolute chaos going on around me. But if I focus on my inner environment, it's something that I do have control over and it's somewhere that I can retreat to. So through the yoga, I'm creating a calm, quiet space inside, somewhere that I can just come back to when everything seems madness outside. And then I can feed this vessel and nourish this vessel with the food that I choose to eat. Um, so things that are not only seem like a real treat, but that also do me good at the same time is kind of what I'm going for. So for example, the golden milk, um, or things like um, organic medjool dates stuffed with um, uh, some creamy peanut butter and some cacao nibs. So it feels like a real treat, and um, but actually it's 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 guilt-free, <laughs> guilt-free puddings. Um, so yeah, I've really been exploring, rediscovering that that side of food. How does each mouthful of food make me feel, and and what impact is it having on my body? So this is really starting to thicken up now. We're almost there. So again, if you follow the recipe um, strictly, it's going to say that you let this cool down for about 10 minutes before adding the oil, which would be fairly boring for you guys, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to transfer it into a different bowl, uh, maybe look at some more of the questions or comments. So if you do have any, then post them in now, because I'll have a spare couple of minutes in a moment when I let this cool down. And again, when it comes to adding the oil, the recipe will say that it's a third of a cup of um, raw organic oil, which you can use um, any time, actually. I use coconut oil, because going along with that kind of um, Asian flavor, I think it, it really complements the other flavors, but you can use um, olive oil or any, any kind of raw organic oil that you like, actually. Um, yeah, and so there is an amount to, to add, but I also do it a little bit by eye. I find that if I add it bit by bit, you can see when it reaches a saturation point. When you add the final bit, it will just start to kind of sit on top of the paste instead of be absorbed by it. So, yeah, it's roughly a third of a cup, but again, um, just, just go by eye, just watch and see what it does. And if it does start to separate and, and, and split a little bit, don't panic. It just means that when you put it into your jar or your container, that you're going to have like a seal on top. It's going to have a layer of, of oil on top. So it really isn't, it's not a biggie. It's not the rest of you gone wrong. Um, Juliet Barrett is interested in healthier dinner alternatives from pasta. Okay, so... Um, my mind, first of all, goes to using a spiralizer. Um, you're probably all familiar with that, but a little machine like a grater where you can create long ribbons out of um, particular vegetables. Um, so an alternative for like tagliatelle or spaghetti, you can create these long ribbons from courgette, from, um, uh, which other ones are good, from squash. Um, but again, at this time of year, for me, I'm not a, a strict raw foodist. I like to experiment with raw food, but um, I prefer it when the weather's hot. Um, and yeah, when the weather's a little bit colder, yeah, it's not something I go to so much. Um, so yeah, in the winter time, rather than pasta, I'm a complete like stew freak. I love like soaking loads of different types of beans, like butter beans, adouki beans, um, kidney beans, or obviously you can buy them tinned, that's, that's the easier option. 
um, and making really, really rich, hearty stews. And then they can go with a whole array of different grains, depending on whether you're gluten-free or, or not. Um, quinoa is, has become really, really popular. That's one of my favorites. Um, otherwise, um, bulgur wheat or millet. Um, I would say my top tip for cooking either quinoa or, or, or millet is to put it in the pan, measure your amounts out, put it in the pan dry first, um, and warm it through until you start to smell it toasting a little bit. So if you want to add a flavour to that, if it's going to be going with something Middle Eastern or something with a bit of spice to it, you can even put some dry spices in there, like some cumin seeds. Um, so yeah, toast, toast the grains first, and then add your water and cook them as you normally would, and at the end you get this lovely nutty added flavour to it. So yeah, I would say as a replacement for pasta, I'd go with really hearty stews um, with some, some toasted flavour grains. And she's also asking if you're going to be doing um, a recipe every week. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. um, Sally's <laughs> nodding in the background. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah I, I would absolutely love to. Um, we're going to aim to have a flow of different um, live streams. Probably twice a month we're going to go for. Um, it might be a mixture of, it might be yoga one time and, and food the next, um, but we're going to aim for two live streams a month. Okay, so we've reached a point now where this is getting really thick. So we turn the heat off again, try and give you a quick look. It is now a real thick paste. Okay, so I'm just going to put that there for a second, just to and transfer it into a different bowl in the hope that it will cool down a little quicker. So this can, once it's finished, I always put it into a sealed jar and if you keep it in the fridge, it's good for about two to three weeks. If you don't think you'll get through it in that time, then you can also freeze it. It's fine to go in the, in the freezer and obviously last a lot longer. Then. Okay, so there's that delicious chai spiced paste that we've got there and I've got my coconut oil here that I'm going to mix in in just a moment and then as I say I make mine um, because I've put in other spices that are a little bit chunky and a little bit bitty which is not so nice to drink um, I just put a, a teaspoon of the paste into one of these um, herbal tea strainers and then add half boiling water and half milk, which can be anything from uh, cow milk, goat milk, sheep milk, through to the plant-based milks, they all, they all work. So. Okay, I'm going to start mixing in the coconut oil. As I say, I just do it bit by bit, as it tends to absorb it, absorb it, absorb it, and then become saturated. So. Just while we're on the topic of, um, of putting coconut oil into drinks, um, this takes me back to when I discovered the, the bulletproof coffees. Again, I'm sure loads of you will be familiar with this, but if you're not, um, it puts in, so make a, a regular coffee. If you are a caffeine fiend, make a regular coffee, or it works with decaf as well. Um, and then pour it into a blender that, that copes with hot liquids. Um, and add for per cup, I'd put in about a heat teaspoon of coconut oil and half a teaspoon of organic butter um, and, and a little bit of boiling water if you want to, to dilute it down a bit and whiz it up and it turns into like a, a, a creamy milk coffee. Um, obviously you can do it with just the coconut milk without the butter, that adds like a slightly more luxury 
side to it, but if you're vegan, um, you can do it with just a little bit more coconut oil. Um, and the idea behind it is that the, it's all again about this food combining. So the potency in the, in the turmeric, in the golden milk, is a combination of the curcumin, the active ingredient in the curcumin with the black pepper. And again, with the bulletproof coffees, it's the combination of the caffeine with the coconut oil that makes your body process the caffeine in a different way. So you get a very gentle high without that jangly edge and not such a drop off at the end. So you don't get that crash where you want the second coffee again. So um, yeah, going back to Julie, I think it was Julia's question about drinks in the morning. If you really, really have to have a coffee first thing, it's so much more gentle on your body if you, if you, if you drink it in this way, in this bulletproof style. Show what's in the bowl? Yeah, sure. So this is the paste that I'm now mixing the coconut oil, that third of a cup of coconut oil in. And it seems to be happily absorbing all of that at the moment. I'll just keep mixing. There's starting to be a little bit of oil just settling on the top, so I'd say that that is about, about perfect. I'm not going to try and add any more. So just to show, I'm now going to put, again, the strength that you make the drink is totally up to you. I find that just a, a teaspoon, a teaspoon of the paste in one of these tea strainers is good. Close that up. And then add, I'm going for half boiling water and half milk. As I say, there's an option to add a sweetener at this point, but I find that the plant-based milk is sweet enough. And probably can't tilt it enough, but yeah, <laughs> delicious cup of um, golden milk with all these fabulous health benefits. Um, you know that not only are you drinking something delicious, but you're doing amazing things for your body as well, really boosting your immune system um, and looking after yourself. So, again, <laughs> again Polly's prompting me on the side. Yeah, if you would like to know anything more about House of Light, um, or there's um, a blog page on our website where we're often, again, I'm gonna start to try and uh, more regularly post some more recipes and things. So if you go to www.houseoflight.love, we've got a beautiful new website that we just launched about a week ago. Um, so yeah, please come and explore any of any more information about us on there. Um, there's also an opportunity to join, to subscribe for our newsletter um, that we'll be trying to, to launch and get going a little bit more fairly soon. Um, so yeah, if anybody has, I'll be, once we've gone offline, I'll be checking all your comments and questions and responding to anything else that anybody has said. I'm just going to check in with Sally before we possibly sign off. Well, okay, thank you so much for joining and um, yeah, I'm going to go and sit down and drink my golden milk. Have a beautiful day.